Hey guys, so just a short little video today. This is almost going to be more like a vlog than anything else. Uh, I've had a ton of new views over the past couple days. One of my other videos finally made it into YouTube recommendations, which is great. So a lot of new views, a lot of new subscribers, and uh, most of you guys probably have no idea who I am. It uh, gave me the thought that maybe I should do something that I've been thinking about doing for a while, and that's kind of a belated introduction. Who am I? Why should you listen to me? The answer to the second question is really you don't have to, I'm just a guy. Uh, you're free to disagree with me if you want. You're free to leave a comment if you want, disagreeing with me. That's fine. But I did just want to talk a little bit about my history, why I love these products so much, how I got started, why I wanted to make this channel. So I first started gaming back in 1978 or 79. Uh, my cousins got an Atari 2600, uh, at that time just called a VCS. Uh, I was over at their house, I don't know, a couple times a year at that point, but uh, for weeks at a time. And uh, I distinctly remember playing Freeway by Activision. That would have obviously been later in the system's run. Um, I remember playing Frogger. I remember playing Asteroids. Uh, and then I had another friend around that same time who had a, a VCS and I distinctly remember going to his house and playing Pac-Man every single day after it was released for about a month. At that time we didn't realize how crap the game was, obviously it was not a great port, but hey, to us it was Pac-Man in the home and it was great. I got my first game console in 1980, 1980 actually, uh, no, yes, 1980. Uh, got it for Christmas. Still remember that day as if it was yesterday. It was a great day for me. It was uh, sort of a Christmas story kind of thing. Uh, we opened all of our presents. I didn't think I got what I want. My dad sent me out to do some laundry and there sitting on top of the laundry machine was my new Intellivision. That was what I wanted. I thought it was more advanced than the Atari 2600, which it was. I still love that machine. I've done a video on that previously. I'll probably do some videos on that again, so watch for those, but definitely check out my, my early Intellivision video. It's a half an hour long. I think it's a really fun video though. Now, I played my Intellivision continuously until about probably 1982 or 83. By then I had an Intellivision 2. At that point, uh, I kind of felt like I was growing out of video games. And there was a period of a year or two when I just didn't play anything. Uh, I don't know what I was doing. I guess I was outside doing actual kid stuff at that time, but uh, I was not playing video games. I did not yet have a computer. In 1984 or 85, uh, my mother bought me my first computer, which was an Apple IIc. I still have that machine. It's behind me. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I've done a video on the Apple II as well where you can see more of that actual machine. Uh, it's still with me. I still love it. The Apple II, this is a 2GS. Not sure if this is in the frame either, but uh, the 2GS, this is a later addition to my lineup, but the 2C is my original machine. Uh, I used an Apple II up until sometime in the 90s. Around, during that time, my mother also thought I was still into console games, which at that time I was not. I had completely moved on to computer games. I loved my Apple II for games, but my mother, Christmas 1985, she knew how much I loved my Intellivision in 1980. She knew how much I loved my Intellivision II a couple years later. So she thought, you know, and bless her heart for this, but she thought Nintendo Entertainment System, he's going to love this too. Of course, at that time, I was maybe 13, 14 years old. I, I thought video games were for kids. I put it in a closet. I never touched it. I never played it. I played it maybe one time when I first got it and never again. I don't know what happened to that machine. It's gone. Luckily, I now have another one, the exact same system, the Nintendo Action Set. And that is with me now. I'm sure I'll do some videos on that in the future. I also have a Famicom which of course is the Japanese release of the NES. At a certain point when I was in high school, I got my first job, which was working at Drucker's Discount Warehouse in New Jersey. Not sure if any of you guys are familiar with that place. They did do mail order, so some of you guys around the country might have heard of them, I'm not sure, but they were big in uh, the local area I lived in New Jersey. 
Drucker's Discount Warehouse, only the finest in discount stereo equipment uh, and video, but mostly stereo equipment, but it was great stuff. And that was the first place that I started learning about audio. I worked there till maybe I was 17, 18, then I took off to Illinois. My roommates there had Atari STs, became pretty familiar with those, loved those. Eventually came back, went to college, while in college, I convinced my dad that he needed to buy me a new computer. Obviously, my Apple II at that point was about eight or nine years old, was completely obsolete. So he bought me, unfortunately, although, you know, fortunately, I mean, I don't look a gift horse in the mouth, but he bought me a Packard Bell 486 SX25, and it served me well, I will admit. It did get me through college. Uh, it was a piece of junk, and I did very quickly upgrade it and learn to build my own machines. I eventually turned that machine completely inside out, upgrading it bit by bit, little by little, including eventually the case. This is actually that machine, believe it or not. It has no components anymore from the original Packard Bell, but believe it or not, the last thing to go was the floppy drive. I changed it out to a black one just to match these top two components up here. It, it had the original beige floppy drive for the longest time and originally had other components from that Packard Bell in there as well, but uh, eventually I did just replace everything. So that's kind of how I learned to build computers. After college, I, my first job after college was at JNR Music World in New York, if you're familiar with that. They were sort of like Drucker's Discount Warehouse, but a lot bigger. And I'm sad to see them gone. Uh, they closed just a few years ago, actually. But uh, mom and pop owned place, uh, but they occupied an entire block in Lower Manhattan. In fact, right next to the World Trade Center. And I worked down there just before 9-11, actually. Luckily, I was not there that day, but uh, I was pretty close. But anyway, I sold all manner of electronics, computers, and other components at JNR. Did not specialize in any one thing, so kind of got to know the entire inventory and uh, a little something about everything. Now, my first, what I'd consider real job, was writing editorial for a website called hotgames.com. Don't go there now, it's now some kind of gambling site or something like that, but when I worked there, which would have been the late 90s, it was uh, late 90s to early 2000s, I guess. Uh, it was an editorial site, and at that time, sites like IGN and GameSpot were a lot smaller than they are now, less influential than they are now, so we were all kind of equals at that time. This was when the web, the commercial web, was kind of just becoming a thing, so there weren't these giant mega sites that you have now. So we were pretty big and we were, as websites go, we were pretty influential at that time. I, I wrote a lot of stuff for that site. You might still be able to see some of my stuff around the net, I'm not sure. And I also got to go on my first trips to Japan uh, with that website. I wrote from the Tokyo Game Show in 2000, from Nintendo Space World also in 2000. And uh, those first trips were kind of magical, life-changing trips for me. And I still go to Japan at least a couple times a year. Some of that's business, some of it's personal, and I'm not really gonna get too far into it beyond that, but uh, I do hope for this channel to bring back a bunch of stuff to feature on the channel next time I go there. I have brought some things back in the past, and some of those you've already seen on the channel. Some of them you probably will in the future, but uh, I'm going to intentionally be trying to buy stuff now just to feature on the channel every time I go there. Now, Hot Games ended up being a victim of the dot-com crash. Everybody working for that site, which at the time was about 35 people, got laid off. I was actually the second to last to go. Uh, our editor-in-chief was the last to go, as you might expect. But it turned out not to be a bad thing because it led directly into my next job, which was working at a major game publisher in New York City. Now, there's really only one major game publisher in New York City. I'm not going to say the name, but uh, you can probably figure it out. 
And I met some great people there. I had a great experience, actually. And I worked in web production and marketing, although uh, us marketing guys got pressed into duty doing a lot of other things. One of my favorite sort of secondary jobs that I was asked to do was taking screenshots. And I'll probably talk about that in a later video, but you've definitely, if you're into video games at all, you've probably seen some of my screenshots. For example, this is probably the favorite one that I took. I took this screenshot. This is called the Hero Shot for Manhunt. And um, yeah, you've probably seen some of my other ones too, but I really like this one. I'm proud of that. So I was there for a few years and eventually moved on. And the last job that I had, I guess, well, I have a job now, but the one previous to this one was working at a cable TV channel. And again, I'm not, I'm really not gonna say the name this time because it's too recent. I did, I worked there for about eight or nine years and uh, finally moved on just a little while ago. I, I now, I do something different. But uh, obviously working at a cable channel, you learn a lot just as you do working at a video game publisher. So I've learned a lot about technical equipment, about filming, about computers, about codecs, different types of video and that kind of definitely helped me to start this channel. So that brings us up to date on my employment history, I guess. But uh, going back a few years now, in terms of game consoles, there was a point when I got back into console gaming, and that was when I was in college. I bought a used Sega Genesis off one of my dorm mates. I paid 90 bucks for it, and it ended up being some of the best money that I ever spent. I love that system. I still, I, I don't have the same system, but I have several Genesis, I guess. Uh, that system though, that specific system is what got me into retro gaming as well. Before that point, the thought was, you know, gaming is just going to keep progressing. It's just going to keep getting better. New systems are going to come out. They're going to be better than the previous system. And that's it. You just, once the new system is out, you throw out the old one, you get the new one and you move on. And I still do that. I still play modern games, but I no longer throw out the old systems. And the reason for that is my Sega Genesis. At a certain point, uh, after the PlayStation came out, the Saturn and then the PlayStation, I ended up choosing the PlayStation. But uh, I went into my local store, and I believe it actually might have been JNR again, and I traded in my Genesis. I think I got $15 for the system and all the games that I had. I took it because I had brought a giant milk crate full of stuff with me on the subway and I didn't want to go home with it. So I took the 15 bucks and I immediately regretted it. I walked out of that place and I thought, my God, what have I done? And ever since then, I am a lot more judicious about what I keep and what I sell away. I can't say I never sell anything, but I do think about it long and hard every time I do. So I ended up buying an Atari VCS, which I never actually owned before. In fact, I bought a Sears Heavy Sixer. That was the first sort of retro console that I ever bought. The first console that I ever bought that I had not owned when it first came out. Uh, Sears Video Arcade Heavy Sixer in the box. I paid $13 for it on eBay. This would have been back around I guess 98, 1998. And after that, the floodgates kind of opened up. I, I just, I went on a huge buying spree. I ended up stocking um, my small apartment with too many game consoles. I couldn't even fit them all in. I had an idea at that time. And again, this would have been around 2000, uh, maybe 99, 2000, that I would eventually open some kind of museum. This is not a new idea at this point. At that time, it was. Um, I eventually decided, well, I don't have the room, I don't have the money, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So I did sell off some of my old game systems again, um, the ones that I never played. And I now have a much more focused collection of games and systems. But now that I have this channel, I'm, I'm sort of back in buying mode. So. We'll see where that leads to. I, I kind of wish I had saved everything now just for this channel. So that's basically my story. That's, that's why I have this channel. I've got probably a 35 to almost 40 year history now of 
playing games on video game consoles, computers, audio and video equipment. Over the years, I've learned a lot of different stuff, both personally and professionally. Um, again, I've, I've done all these things both in my private life as well as uh, as a job. So hopefully I do know what I'm talking about most of the time on this channel. There very well could be times that I don't. Um, but again, I am trying to make informative, fun, kind of interesting videos, and hopefully I'll be able to come up with some more subjects to keep you guys interested, especially all my new subscribers and the subscribers that I've had before. I do have a whole bunch of videos in the pipeline and in production right now, and that's kind of why I'm doing this quick video right now, is sort of to keep you guys occupied and so you have something to see while I'm working on some longer videos. I don't know if you can see back here, I've got a couple of vintage pieces of audio equipment. These both need to be fixed, and they will be, and that's going to be part of uh, the videos that I do about them. But uh, these, these are really interesting in different ways. Um, so watch for videos on those. I'm gonna have a video very shortly on um, capturing video from old game consoles, um, as well as just uh, the capture device that I use in general. I, I figure it, it's probably a good idea every once in a while to do some videos on the actual equipment that I use. I know I find those videos interesting when other YouTubers do that. So. I'll be doing that. And let's see, what else? Well, several of you have actually requested a video on this machine, and I will be doing that. I have to get it back into working order. All it actually needs is a hard drive. I looked in there before, uh, before doing this video, and it just needs a hard drive and a new copy of Windows. So hopefully that will happen pretty soon. Um, I want to keep it in sort of period mode, so I'm going to get a big fat, ugly hard drive for it and see where it goes from there. You see behind that, that's a, um, that's a Tandy 1000. That's a great machine that is barely used and I actually discovered it in my attic just a little while ago. So I'll be doing a video on that. And there's more coming too besides that. So just keep watching. So that's about it for now. As usual, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.